show you what I know Break it free from the mainstream The studio machine I want it my way Indie Film Nation I want it my way Indie Film Nation Going all the way Indie Film Nation You know it's gotta be John, welcome back to Melbourne. Thanks, Mike. And uh, tell us, what's the premises for X? Look, it's a thriller about a couple of prostitutes in King's Cross in Sydney. What happens to them one night? So it's, a, it's a, that's the basic story. Uh, it's, it's about like a, a, a sort of a jaded high-end escort who's, who's decided to quit her job, uh, or who's quitting and the next day is getting on a plane to Paris and changing her life. It's her last sort of day on the job, and it's a uh, and the other character is a teenage runaway who basically gets off the bus at Central, and walks up to the cross and starts hooking on. You know, and they, you know, fate brings them together. They witness a you know something bad, and then just go through the night from hell. And uh, it sort of ends up cathartic, redemptive, sad, and uh, but hopeful. You know, so it's it's a. It, it, it's like most. It's like all my films. It's very generically sound. It's a thriller with a lot of sex and violence, and uh, but with a uh, two sort of powerhouse roles for women. So uh, women in the lead role: Viva Bianca and Hannah Mangan Lawrence, and they're pretty awesome. Awesome. And uh, the writing process. Where did this? Where did the idea or this germ of an idea start from? And uh, and how long did you actually spend writing this particular script? Um, look, um, in the 80s, um, or the late 80s, early 90s, uh, I'd already made a feature film and I think somebody at Film Victoria said, listen, why don't you submit a short and we might give you some money to make a short. And uh, I was uh, working in the film industry and we had an office in Greve Street in uh, St Kilda, which you'd probably know. And, um, and it, you know, it was like, Hooker Central there, like girls working work in the streets like 24-7. I don't know, I got to know a few of them and so I figured I'd um, make this, um, write this little short film called X about like, well, well, I used to call them the St Kilda serial killer, like I think a number of prostitutes got murdered and uh, they were meant to be unrelated crimes but I always figured, well maybe it's some sort of weird serial killer at work and I, I, I wrote this short film and of course Film Victoria would not keen on, on financing something like that. But like I made the poster, yeah. which was this graphic of a woman standing in an X pose and, um, and I'd written that script. Anyhow, it never happened but um, uh, and then uh, you know, things happened, we, en we ended up in Sydney, my wife Linda and I, we write together, we made Red Ball together. We're living in Sydney and uh, right at the end of the 90s, um, the producer Andrew Mason um, uh, a really nice guy and a great producer. He was one of the producers on The Matrix, which, which Belinda was in, and they sort of got to know each other. And then he ended up seeing Red Ball because of that connection. Um, and, and he was putting together this deal with Ed Pressman to make five $1 million films in Australia from, you know, five different filmmakers. And he came to us and said, listen, I want you guys to make one of these films. What do you got? And, you know, we had a couple of written scripts. Um, and we had a couple of ideas, and one of our ideas was this, you know, these hookers who go through the night from hell sort of idea. <laughs> and there's the poster. Yeah. And he said, that looks really interesting. Let's make that. So, you know, Belinda and I wrote the script and we, we, we tailored it to, to be able to be made for a million dollars. Like, because um, I mean, obviously by that time I'd made, uh, two features and was making my third in the underground so I knew how to do it I knew how to tailor a script to be to be made for a low amount of money as a legitimate feature you know like um, so um, we wrote that script but you know like 9-11 happened the finance went away uh, it just it, 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 none of those films ever got made but we had a very cool script that was um, 
uh, written from a place that we knew. Belinda and I live in King's Cross. We live on Darlinghurst Road right next door to McDonald's. We've lived there since 2000. And, uh, and it's influenced every, pretty much everything we've done. And you know, it, the script was about women that we saw every day and that we knew and, uh, and it was set in the cross. So anyhow, we, we, developed, we kept developing it, kept writing it, kept tweaking it. Got a little bit of money out of uh, the AFC. Um, people like Carol's clan was pretty supportive of the script. Um, um, you know, and it was always floating around, but I mean, me as a, as a producer, uh, I'm a, I'm, I think I'm a little too flaky and a little too left field to engender a lot of confidence on pe people who are going to give you a large, large amounts of money. Uh, that's probably why I've made, produced most of my films in the underground, you know, like self-produced type stuff. A very old friend of mine, Lizette Atkins, uh, Melbourne-based producer who you probably know, yeah. Um, we've known each other for 25 years. Um, I was continually pestering her, saying, come on, Lizette, why don't you produce X? You know, like, she was always too busy. But anyhow, at Cannes in 2009, I finally convinced her to go, you know what, okay. You know, I like the script. It's pretty cool. It's ready to go. I'll, 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 let's join forces and see if we can get this made. And seriously, we had a finance within, I don't know, a few months by September and so you know that sort of serendipity happened but the script had been around for 10 years so we're talking 2009 and the first draft of the script was written in like 1999 and we'd originally written it for Belinda to play the lead role uh, it's about a it's about a, a high-end call girl who's approaching 30 and deciding you know fuck it's over I'm going to you know I've got enough money now and I'm, I'm heading to Paris and starting a new life um, uh, but Belinda was too old to play that role. Yeah. That, was, that was probably the only downside. But it was an upside as well because we cast Viva Bianca in the role and I mean, she's an extraordinary actor and sort of, even though maybe Australia doesn't know it yet, but she's a big international star as well yeah. through Spartacus, Blood and Sand. And yeah, so, but yes, yeah, once you start doing stuff, serendipity can happen. But you've got to start doing it. Yeah. But yeah, you're only as good as the people you work with and without me connecting with Lizette, well, without Belinda and I connecting with Lizette, I don't, I don't think I'd ever have got the film financed. And with such a long gestation period for the, for the, for the film, how long was the actual production? Uh, you know, did, they, did you have uh, four weeks or what was the actual... How, what it was, was a very quick shoot. Um, I mean, uh, look, look it's, it was, it's a million dollar film, which is a, an obscene amount of money, but it's still not a huge amount of dough. It's all shot on location in King's Cross because we couldn't afford to make sets anyhow. But I, I also don't, I wanted, to, like its sense of place was very important to me because it's, we basically shot it in our backyard, like where we live, where 24 seven, you know, that, where we live. Um, and um, I, I, wanted to, I wanted it to resonate with this sense of, of, of King's Cross. Um, so it was a four week shoot, that's uh, 20 days, which for such an ambitious drama, like it's, um, there's like 17 or 18, there's two key roles and then 17 or 18 other roles, maybe 35 different locations. Um, it's ambitious. It's not two people in a room sort of for half the film. Um, so it was very, that's the one thing I was always conscious of that we're always going, you know, like, go, you know, we've got to keep moving. Yeah. Um, which I think added to the energy of the film. And we had to like think on our feet, and you know, some things happened with regards to locations where we had to just reimagine scenes like in the moment, which I'm sort of pretty good at doing because I've always had to do that. You know, I've never really had the luxury of of working in a set that w was all pre-planned, like for weeks in advance. Like even on Acolytes, which was a four million dollar film, for most of that film, I was stepping into a location for the first time with. 30 crew going, what are we doing? And I'm going, right, okay, well, well you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the idea of like this planned out storyboards. And, yeah. you know, like, I mean, I've got nothing against storyboards, but uh, they sort of, they're meaningless unless you've got a lockdown location and yeah. shit like that. Yeah. But yeah. one of the most impressive things of the, the, the film is the visual nature of the film. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Mark Pugh, yeah. a fantastic uh, cinematographer. Um, being what you've just explained, how did you how do you approach 
uh, is it is it a lot of him or is it a lot of you when you're making those selections of lens choices, lighting? Because I mean, you, oh, it's it's, yeah. it's 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 I mean that it's Mark's gig. I mean, Mark, I think he's he's a wonderful cinematographer, works really quick, loves to do his own shit, much to the chagrin of perhaps his assistants and stuff. You know, pulls his own focus, and you know we've got a a way of working like it's the third feature that we'd made together so it didn't make it a lot easier for us just to know intuitively what we wanted um but yeah it's like the usual thing like what do you think uh, yeah yeah because it's we shot it on the red what you see is what you get we had a pretty good idea of what we're getting the camera was always mobile like we've worked out this way of shooting where like mark's got a thing called an easy rig which is like a steady cam vest with this thing and the camera just hangs on a bungee in front of him for most of the time. So we're not on sticks. So the camera's very mobile, but you can actually just shoot and it's rock solid. So it's not this zippity zap handheld thing. It's very smooth. But you can, you can got a bit of latitude and we can move very quickly, um, which we had to do. So we decided that that was the way we were gonna shoot the film. Um, and uh, person, personally, I like, even though I, I love to make shots and for me, Filmmaking isn't just recording actors, you know, it's making shots with actors in them. But I like to stay out of the actor's way as well, as much as I can, you know. So we try to impose cinema on actors who are free to, to, to act, which is the most important thing. And we just capture it in a cinematic way. It's in scope. And, you know, Mark's a fucking genius. And, the, and the, the te with technology just improving and improving and improving, we had the the new Mysterium X chip upgrade. It was one of the first cameras to get it. So we were sort of on the out on the sort of the bleeding edge, if you like, wondering. wondering there, there was the theoretical latitude of the camera, but nobody had actually shot with it. But the latitude was incredible. I mean, the thing that I had to my personal discovery, not so much in the shoot, but certainly in post when we were grading, was that I just wanted to gloom gloom it down because even though it was all shot at night and it was night. It was just, there was just so much detail in the frame. I had to just start rethink the way I thought night should look. Because yeah, Mark's going, what are you talking about? It's great, it's awesome, you know, it's night. It's not day, it's night. I'm going, but you can see all the you know, Just the shit you have to, you have to like rethink because the camera, the latitude of the red is in, unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. And with your, with your, the cast, because obviously films like this fly and die on the, on the performance, did you do uh, any uh, rehearsals or did you sort of have a, have a short rehearsal and into the... No, no, no. We, we had a decent... We had six weeks pre, uh, which... All that shit is... Like, pre-production is really important and rehearsal is really important. And we had three weeks rehearsal with the... Well, the key cast is like, there's Viva, Bianca and Hannah Mang and Lawrence. Um, and even though we didn't have Hannah for as long, because she came straight off the shoot of Thirst, like wrapped on the Saturday, came back to Sydney from Broken Hill or something and started on the Monday. And I th think Hannah had like, we had a couple of weeks of rehearsal, just Viva and Hannah just becoming comfortable with one another. And I mean, they're both great actors, um, but I'd already worked with Hannah on Acolytes. Like she made her first feature for me when she, only when she was 16. And she'd only just turned 19. And, I mean, both roles, the actors had to really, you know, be quite daring, you know, because, I mean, it was essential for Belinda and I, like, we're making a film about prostitutes, and, you know, I didn't want to shy away from the sort of shit that you need, that goes on, you know, like, you're selling sex for money, and you're generally naked, and it's body-driven, and so, I guess the film is, operates in that world where, I'm going, I'm trying to be, um, I want a degree of verisimilitude and truth, you know. Uh, you know, if people are fucking in bed, I don't want them to get out of bed with their, still with their underwear on. You know, just that shit that just breaks the other whole reality for me. It's got to be truthful. You might have to show a bit of flesh. It ain't about that, but you'll probably have to show it here and there just to be truthful, you know, like, well, that's me saying that, but somebody else, which... Uh, now that the film is going into the public domain and people are going to start judging it, I think a lot of people are going to go, this is a fucking voyeuristic, prurient, you know, like uh, exploitation film. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, you make a film about plumbers, you want to see them pulling the shit out of the bloody... You know, you, d you don't want to try and hide that. 
And so it was very important that the film not be afraid to go there. You know? And did you did you have to, with the cast, uh, was that one of the things that you had to approach with them when you were originally casting them? Because obviously there's a lot of oh, people yeah, that have problems with them. Abs- absolutely. Like, you know, like, I was absolutely up front. Um, because there's no other way you can do it. I didn't like trying to like in the moment go, oh, come on, will you please? You know, like it was, it was always, here's the script. You know, you're an Australian actor. Whenever, like a chick, whenever do you get to read a role like that to play that? Okay, it's an awesome role. And you've got to, you've got to go for it. You know, there's no, you, you can't be coy. You have to abandon, you have to like give up whatever ideas you got and go for it, like, get naked, relaxed, you know, like, you, you have to be willing, because we, we might go there, we might not either, but we might, and you've got to be up for that, and that's important, if you've got a problem with it, you've got to tell me now, and let's, you know, hey, hail fellow well met, but I'll get, get, get somebody else. Yeah. Hannah was always up for it, you know, she read that script when she was 16 and wanted to do it, because um, the character is 17, but obviously she had to become 18 before yeah. she could do it. Um, and um, and Viva, I think Hannah and Viva are smart, intelligent women, really good actors, and then they know a great role when they see it. And you know, like my, obviously Belinda's a, a very experienced Australian actor and a great Australian actor, and you know, like they know, th- these roles don't come along very often in Australia. Generally. It, it's all it's, it's the men are in the center of the frame and they get all the good shit to do so Viva and Hannah were smart enough to go fuck I'm up I'm, I'm gonna go for it you know this is a great role and if it re- requires me to be daring great I'm gonna go for it but that's not to say that like it's all about that it sort of isn't and maybe people will go see it and they'll go what's he talking about they didn't really get to see anything you know like but it, it ain't about that yep. but yeah we were totally up front and I guess my unwritten contract with Hannah and Viva was that I was going to look after them. I was going to not exploit the nudity if, if any of it ended up in the film and um, yeah, look after them, make sure they were always looking great, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, but that's all you can do. But yeah, they really had to, yeah, well, the, the, the actors playing those roles had to really take the leap and then some supporting cast like the film opens with um with Viva's character introducing a young uh, male prostitute to a group of society women like you know in Rose Bay in a Rose Bay mansion so basically they fuck you know like in front of these women drinking champagne common occurrence a fuck away party you know where the women are going it's all about the guy so you got this guy like totally naked um and uh Darren Moss the actor like like I said to him Darren you know, you've read the script, you're naked. You know, you're buck naked, are you cool with it? You know, and, and you've got to let me look at you yeah. so that there's nothing that's going to pull too much focus or yeah. not, you know, just shit like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's awkward stuff, but you've just got to go in at that level, yeah. you know? Because I know you're a great actor and you can absolutely nail the role, but if you've got any sort of hang-ups, maybe now's the time to tell me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and, and with the, your, your post, production I mean how long were you in post and and what you what you actually cut on uh, we cut uh, so we shot on the red and we cut Final Cut Pro which um, oh, you know why would you use anything else I reckon like you know uh, uh, so we were cutting I don't know HD ProRes but Final Cut Pro and then once we locked the edit uh, it, it was a 12 week edit um, you would never have enough time in the edit but like you know, that's the place where you really need time. I'd, I'd almost like to have less, like, I'd, 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 I would probably have less time in the shoot for more time in the edit if I had to make a trade-off. Um, and, um, and then we did the online at uh, Complete Post and a grade uh, there. And I mean, the grade is now a very significant next step in the process, even though Mark and I both love to try and get the results in camera so that we've got beautiful pictures from the get-go, going, oh, how awesome is this? So that when we go into the grade, it's all about, what's our aesthetic now? How do we make this better? Or maybe this is good enough, we just gotta, you know, stuff like that. But you've got so much latitude now, like you've got a shot like this, and you can go, gee, this would be great if it was a close-up. Well, let's just pop, 
you know? It's, in, it's sort of incredible. So posters become, that sort of post has become a lot more significant now, like, you know, and it's all instant in real time and the great is an awesome experience. Because gee, by that time you've, the editor's finished and you know you've either got a good, you know, you, you know you've got a film you're comfortable with. Yeah. The, 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 the early days of the edit is still probably the most debilitating <laughs> over the whole, the whole process. You know, watching the first assemble, you generally want to blow your brains out. You know? <laughs> so the screening next week at MIF, Melbourne International Film Festival, is our world festival premiere. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but things are starting to happen from there. It's, gonna, it's, it's a closing night film of the Sydney Underground Film Festival. I mean, for me, like, even though Linda and I live in Melbourne, oh, sorry, live in Sydney, and the film's a Sydney film, I mean, Melbourne is our spiritual home. Like, like we come, we're, Mel we're from Melbourne, and, um, and I, I know that, like, King's, King's Cross is the most like Melbourne Sydney gets. Yeah, and I guess that's why I live there, because, you know, <laughs> I think Melbourne's the coolest city in Australia, and um, I don't know, like, so... And MIF have been very supportive of, of all, all my films, so it's great that this is our... For me, this is our world premiere. Yeah. I mean, we were released theatrically and on VOD in America um, uh, in April, but that all just happened incredibly quickly. You know, IFC picked the film up before it was even finished and we are just red hot to get it into release, you know, like... And who am I to complain, yeah. right? That screened in a cinema in fucking Manhattan, like, you know, like... It was, uh, you know, like, it was great. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it feels like we've only just finished it. Like, we only delivered it for Berlin, like, three, four, five months ago. But, yeah, so we've been in release in America. We are released in London in, on the 8th of October. Germany on the 1st of November. Canada, I think, in two weeks. And uh, Australia in uh, mid-October. look, where can yeah. people find out more about the film? Do you have a website? Uh, yeah, people? yeah, there's... um. Uh, there's um, uh, xthemovie.com.au, yep. uh, which is an, uh, and but go there. But f we've got a Facebook site that's I'm just continually updating the thing all the time. And because I'm a bit of a closet King's Cross historian, because nobody else has seemed to have done it, like I've got a YouTube channel that I keep putting stuff to. Like I've been doing it for four or five years, and there's like maybe 30 hours of video there. From the history of King's Cross, you know, bits and all about King's Cross. So I keep, I, I, I use that and yeah. I mean, X is a, it's a King's Cross movie, you yeah. know, like, yeah. Well, John, congratulations. Good to see you. Thanks, Mike. And uh, we look forward to seeing more from you in the very near future. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Peace.